What's good? I'm back. Yours truly, one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, a.k.a. Triple P, a.k.a. the Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and much, much more. I'm going to react to a video of an obese TikToker basically implying like that planes should be built obese as well. Before we do that, though, I want to give you a word from Dizzle Brand Premium Luxury liqueur and here we go that dizzle ain't no joke got me addicted ain't no coke let's just have a toast anybody want some smoke cause it's up i be dizzy thug catch me sipping with my double cup can't just have one, you gotta double up. You pour it, gotta watch it bubble up. I ain't gon' lie, I cannot get enough. With Cat and said, I need another one. Gonna have you coming back for more, but go get it while it's hot. Before be sold out in your stores. That this one. That's right. That Dizzle. Dizzle is a premium luxury liqueur mixed with agave tequila. Cognac and orange liquor mango mix. Throw your Dizzle on ice, and it's nice. If you want to order your very own bottle or bottles of Dizzle Premium Luxury Liqueur, go to DizzleBrand.com, click on our locations, click on one of the top three website links. I recommend Emilio's Beverage. Must be 21 and over. Shipping and handling is included. Below that is locations in store in California, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Arkansas. And Arkansas being... um. Uh, number one selling state for Dizzle right now as we speak. Um, so let's get into it. Let me pull up this video. Yeah, I rode an elevator before. It was just the funnest and greatest thing ever. I love it. Yeah, I bet you do. 750-pound capacity. Yeah. If she, she gains five more pounds, she's fucked. Holy shit, you could hear the fucking chair like fucking creaking as she sits in the shit. <laughs> it is struggling. <laughs> oh. Wait, 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 hold up, hold up. She said it's struggling. No, it's not struggling. Bitch, you're struggling. Sure. I don't want to break it. Well, how about don't bounce around in it if you don't want to fucking break it? If it's, what the fuck is going on here? But, like, again, but here's the thing. Like, I don't know. Why are they making chairs so narrow? Wait, why are they making chairs so narrow? Uh, it's how they've always made chairs, you stupid fucking bitch. Let's keep it moving. That's way too much. <laughs> Greg Foreman. Boy, boy, I gotta tell you guys, I am dying right now. I am absolutely losing it. 
because there's this TikTok that is going viral of this woman who is claiming wow. discrimination, right? Because they don't build airplanes wide enough to fit her in 2023. Now, if you guys look at this woman, I mean, come on, bro. Come on, let's let's look at this video, bro. He said this is discrimination. She said this is discrimination. Bro. I'm on dog. Whoa. Yo. Yo. Wow. That's crazy. America, we wow. got a problem. Wow. <laughs> we got a problem, bro. We got a problem. No. <laughs> so. Again, you know, honestly, this is really not funny. <laughs> but not. I got to tell you, the comment it's section on some of these videos of this TikToker who, again, is making a living from being obese, man. Like, I mean, this is what social media has done, okay? She's making a living from being obese, okay? I mean, guys, social media quite literally promotes the worst, right? The worst behaviors and habits, okay? Something that clearly is not good. Right. Objectively, this is not good, but this is what is being promoted. Right. And, um, we got to read the comments because the comments got me dying. Right. And this person said the problem is not the owls. Right. FedEx, FedEx or DHL. Wow. This person said, wow. Maybe switch the UPS ground. Operation. Wow. Oh, wait. <laughs> Install seats in the cargo area. Cargo area. Yeah, that's about right. <gasps> Backpack full of snacks. <laughs> I, probably right. Probably right. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> Oh man, <laughs> I can't, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but again, <laughs> the comments here are crazy. Okay, um, you there's no way we should not have human beings this large. Okay, nope. I'm just saying, um, this woman has to take an elevator up to the restaurant that she likes to go to. Right, this is so the greatest the thing ever. <laughs> she take the elevator. Mind you, this elevator is used for um, probably um, boxes or produce that they need to get up to the restaurant. Probably for like people bringing produce and product to the restaurant. That's what it's used for. It's not used for human beings. I mean... Unless they're the size of a hippopotamus, apparently. I mean, come on, dog. Come on. <laughs> she, she, she went to TikTok out. How did she get in there in the first place? Look. Oh my gosh, I made a How did she get in there? Okay, look. Look. Somebody in the comment section said, call the tow truck. Call the tow truck. <laughs> Wow. I mean, how'd she get there in there in the first place? <laughs> I'm dying. I'm dying right now. <laughs> so I said, how'd she get there in the first place? <laughs> oh, 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 bro, I can't breathe, bro. Okay. Let's check this out, bro. Oh, man. I mean, she's complaining about the aisle seats. Okay, that the aisles are not large enough, a little or wide enough, and this is this is what she's supposed. This hold up, this shit says a little snack while I wait for the real food, bitch. This is a humongous snack. One of those is not even a snack for me. The snack would be like 
some cheese sticks, and then I get a hot dog and some fries, maybe, you know, but this I did a, a, one hot dog is a snack. Bitch, th- three hot dogs is a humongous snack. This is crazy. This is why I don't really, I don't feel bad laughing because it's just like, this is what you're inviting. You're inviting this, like you know what you're doing, right? You're promoting this type of craziness. Like, look at this. Thank you. Could you sit on the table for me, please? This is delicious. Thank you so much. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> mm. Thank you. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> Somebody said she She's got like, excited. <laughs> when the little snack is a whole regular meal. <laughs> My God. She sounds like she wants to make love to the food. <laughs> but you complain about the, the airplane owls. Like, come know, on, right? bro. Like, come on, dog. Come on. I mean, bro, look, look at this, bro. Look at this. <laughs> I mean, it's terrible. Look. <laughs> Again, worst part, man. If this woman lost like 600 pounds, she would probably be a 10. I don't right? know about all that. <laughs> She'd probably be a 10. I don't 10. know about all that. Okay? As you guys can see, I'm crying. I'm literally crying. Guys, <laughs> we have an obesity problem. This is not discrimination, bro. Nope. It's not discrimination. And you know what the United States is doing, right? One of the reasons why I'm doing this video is because the USDA has realized that we have an obesity problem. So now they're thinking about banning chocolate milk uh, in schools <laughs> as a response to the obesity problem in this country. That's all. When I was in school, that's predominantly what most kids drank, man, was chocolate milk. Like all the kids wanted to get the chocolate milk. Take a look. The USDA is considering a big change to school lunch menus that many kids yeah. may not be happy about. I can hear them yelling from home right now. The agency is discussing whether yep. to ban chocolate milk because of its high sugar content. WBZ's Christina Hager went out to get some reaction. Lunchtime, snack time, any time. Chocolate milk is a favorite for a lot of kids. But now the USDA says some of this has as much sugar as soda. And now the government may take it off the menu at public schools. I think that's more of like my job as a parent to tell them what they should and shouldn't be able to have versus what the school feels as though my child should and shouldn't be able to have. Boston. You know, it's the, the thing about that is that the school decides they don't want to serve chocolate milk. They got that right. But you as a parent, it, you got the right to send chocolate milk with your kid in a packed lunch when they go to school. Like, that's the thing. You don't, parents don't, um, I don't think parents have ever got to dictate the exact menu items that a school um, serves. And I ain't gonna lie, man. When I was a kid, school lunches with a bomb. Chicken charms, the smoked sausage, the taco pizzas. Um, yeah, school lunches were pretty good, man. Public schools has already taken it out of cafeterias. All milk is unflavored. No flavored milk will be offered. Hey, hold up. And the parents, did Michelle Obama try to bring in the healthy food in the schools? She tried that. It seemed like it didn't work. But did parents have a say-so with that? No, they didn't. But here in Watertown, it's still up for grabs at school. So I'm a nurse myself, and I think that it probably doesn't help like juvenile diabetics either. Thing is, not all flavored milk is created equal. The USDA recommends no more than 10 grams of added sugar per serving in flavored milk. And according to this label, 17 grams, that's too much. New England Dairy, which represents local dairy producers, says flavored milk has its benefits. Calcium, vitamin D, and potassium. 
And those are three nutrients that we know kids aren't getting enough of. And the reality is kids love flavored milk. And if a child has a choice of regular milk, chocolate milk, where do they pick chocolate milk over regular milk? For sure. Every time. Every time. Yeah. All things for federal nutrition experts to think about as they. You know what? I drink milk. You know, I eat cereal. Um, I just had French toast, which, you know, you got to pour some milk in there with the eggs. A lot of people don't like milk. Um, I drink almond milk too every now and then. I love the vanilla almond milk. It's it's actually better for you. But there's a lot of people that will drink almond milk and don't drink regular milk. Um, you got the vegan nuts that won't drink no milk, but they're they're actually hypocrites because like something I saw on Yellowstone where he was saying, you know, when you plow a field, you kill you know snakes, worms, mice. Frogs and frogs is definitely something that people eat. So he was saying, like, how cute does the animal have to be before you care about it? You know, and whatnot. But um, yeah, man, kids are gonna choose chocolate milk, even strawberry milk. I like strawberry milk. They consider whether to shut out his old school favorite in Watertown, Christina Hager, WBZ News. Yeah, so you're seeing that, you heard that. The USDA is considering banning chocolate milk in school because childhood obesity is out of control, okay? 19.7% of children or adolescents are obese. So basically one out of five. And 41.9% of adults have obesity with 49.9% of black Americans adults being obese. So half of black folks are obese. Hispanic adults 45.6%. Again, this is a problem. Um, the people that want to beg for free government paid for uh, health care uh, are silent about this issue. Okay, They're silent about the obesity problem that we have in this country, which is costing this country $173 billion a year. But yet... And knowing those numbers is the reason why they said the pandemic was a pandemic. And, you know, I know people be like, well, when you live in civilization, there's a social contract. But part of the social contract isn't that I'm responsible, I'm responsible for you staying underweight, staying at a healthy weight. Um, and, and as far as this, chick making um a living off of being obese as a tiktoker i would argue she's not really making a living as a tiktok influencer per se like i do marketing and advertising for a living i promote music and um i would and we pay tiktok influencers to promote music i would argue that she's really making a living off of being laughed at but not in the sense of a comedian like it you know, it's one thing to be a comedian and be a comic and get paid to get laughed at. She's like, you've seen the comments in there. Like, she's only making money by people clowning her, putting her down, talking shit. Her. I wouldn't want to have to, I wouldn't want to make a living that way. I would argue that she's not making a fan, uh, making money because she has an actual, like, fan base that really supports her i think it's more of just like the wow factor you know it's just like wow um this is crazy this is ridiculous and she gets a lot of traffic and a lot of views from it and yeah she probably might have a decent amount of followers because there's the people out there that be like, don't body shame. Um, I shouldn't have to body shame you. You should be ashamed of yourself. Like me personally, like I'm not even the most fit person. But um, I walk every single day. I walk I walk my dog to the park. I like to walk um, at least um, up the block and back. You know, I have what I like to call not a beer gut, but a computer gut. If I get any bigger than I am, will I get ashamed? Yeah, I get ashamed. 
Um, am I proud of my computer gut? No, no, I I do definitely need to be disciplining myself to do, to work out better to get my gut and my chest right. You know, my arms are pretty skinny, but this idea we're going to normalize being not healthy, being overweight. We're going to act like it's cool. Like this is something you should thrive for to achieve in life, to be successful is be like this woman where you can't even walk up the stairs to go to a restaurant. You have to take a elevator that's used for cargo. This is ridiculous, man. This is ridiculous. Like this person should not be portrayed as some kind of role model to inspire to be like, let let me hear what else you got to say. Again, we have a society that is out here promoting fat acceptance, obesity acceptance, instead of promoting fitness and health, eating healthier, calorie control, right? You know the solution to childhood obesity? The solution to childhood obesity, and really the obesity problem in America in general is, again, one, not promoting it as something healthy, okay? Shaming people, right? Bringing back fat shaming, okay? Uh, as a thing, it's not okay to be big, it's not okay to be that big, okay, especially morbidly obese, it's not okay, Uh, two, we need to educate people, right, classes uh, in school need to actually teach about nutrition and calorie control, because that's what it comes down to, right, and the school cafeterias should follow suit, yes, you need to limit the calorie intake of kids, now, does that mean that you need to necessarily ban chocolate milk, not necessarily, but I agree with that. You have to control calorie intake, right? When, when I was growing up in school, I was what I would consider to be overweight, okay? I was an overweight child, okay? Um, and I lost a ton of weight uh, when I was in high school, okay? My, my freshman year in high school, I lost a ton of weight uh, simply by stop eating the school food, right? I would bring like a tuna sandwich and I would drink like uh, some milk or something like that every single day for lunch. And I lost a lot of weight because I just simply stopped eating the cafeteria food because the cafeteria food was just so unhealthy, right? I mean, they're giving you pizzas. The salads have, you know, a ton of ranch dressing. You know, they have a bunch of pro- They didn't even have salads when I was in school. And, you know, I pretty much heard enough. And you know what I think? You know what, to me, what the theme of what's going on here is? The theme is the same theme I see over and over again. Everything that's considered the right thing to do in society, people are trying to say is the wrong thing to do. And the things that are the wrong thing to do in society, people are trying to say are the right things to do. That That's what's going on here. People are turn it right in the wrong, wrong in the right, up is down, down is up, left is right. Um, man can become woman, woman can become man. That's all this is. Anything that's considered the right thing to do in life, they're trying to say is wrong. And, you know, I can only imagine that that woman doesn't have a man probably won't have a man if she does he's he'll probably be as obese as her and it's not funny but like i was more laughing at greg laughing than anything but it is it's like this idea that um you want to shame somebody because you know, they don't agree with the fact that being overweight like that is just not healthy and not attractive at all. And it's very inconvenient. And like, let me let me say something. When she was trying to sit in that chair in somebody's house, she knew better. She should have been sitting her ass on the fucking couch. Sit your fat ass on the couch. You know better than that shit. You know, I would have kicked her ass out of the house just for trying that shit. She knew better. that She shouldn't be trying to sit on no chair like that any fucking time. She should be going for the couch every fucking time. I mean, come on, man. Let's have some common sense. 
Uh, once again, I want to thank you for tuning in, Paul Pickett Podcast, and I'm out. <laughs>